Hey there guys, what's up General Secure with my round 3 tournament battle against King of Nido 17. So yeah, I lead off with Miss Magius and he leads off with Beedrill. He immediately switches it out for some reason. Probably because he would not like taking a Shadow Ball or something. Brings in Meganium. I go for the Shadow Ball. I mean, what else was I gonna do? And it doesn't really... It pretty much does nothing. Which kinda sucks. So I'd figure get Mc uh, Miss Magius out of there. Because he's not really gonna be able to do much. Bring in Blissey. Because why the hell not? Meganium uses Toxic. Blissey has Natural Cure so it's really no biggie. And with some luck I can like poison it as well. Uh, this is gonna take... I mean, you've probably seen the uh, length of the battle by now. Yeah, this is going to take forever. It was like almost 50 minutes w without cutting out all the move selections and waiting and stuff. Anyway, he switches to Electivire. I poison it. And he actually made... Or, uh, I saw some videos on his channel from his previous tournament battles. And he used a different team in those, and apparently he now made a team specifically to counter mine. I mean, I pretty much rely on Scarm Bliss, and he has Electivire and Infernape, which are both pretty much Scarm Bliss counters. So yeah, he kind of, uh, I think he did at least make a team based with the ability to counter mine. So yeah, that kinda sucks. Uh, Miss Maggie stakes a thunder, and then he switches out into Meganium again. And that kind of was uh, bad. Anyway, he switch out Miss Maggie again because he's pretty weak and I still need him. Bring in Skarmory because what's Meganium gonna do to Skarmory? But it's going to Aromatherapy. And I think crap, now his Electivire is no longer poisoned. That's kind of. Uh, That might not be that helpful. And then he switches out Meganium again. Brings in Miltank. And that... M After this battle, I really freaking hate Miltank. But anyways, I set up my first layer of spikes. And then he goes for Seismic Toss. But yeah, that's really all Miltank can do to Skarmory. I mean, unless you... Pull off some novelty mill tank with hidden power fire or something. Although that's what I'm currently using on uh, Pokemon Online. I'm using like uh, Specs Bronzong with hidden power fire to counter that freaking mole thing that's everywhere. I swear that thing is so overpowered, it's just unbelievable. Anyway, he switches out mill tank, brings in Electivire, takes damage from the spikes. And I get my final layer of spikes up, which means I'm good to go now. However, I'm, I don't know what he's going to do. But I changed one member on this team, which actually comes in handy here pretty well. It's Articuno's gone out and Porygon 2's come in. Trace the motor drive, so that I'm immune to his electric moves. Yeah, I get a free speed boost, and then he goes for Brick Break. Don't know why he doesn't have Cross Chop, because that's vastly superior on Electivire. Doesn't even do half. Takes some Life Orb Recoil, and I just go for the Ice Beam. Which... Does quite a fair amount of damage. And he goes for Brick Break again. Still doesn't knock Porygon 2 out. And I really think I should have done things differently here. I mean, I could have just stalled him out with Life Orb Recoil if I use Recover, but I went for Ice Beam for some reason. Which now leaves Porygon 2 at very low HP and pretty much unable to be of any further use. So yeah, that's kind of bad, but at least I took out one of his Skarm Blaze counters. So now that's only Infernape to go, and then he brings in his Beedrill. Which is quite a pain. 
because it starts setting up toxic spikes. And yeah, that is also one of the things I did not really consider anyone using against me. I've actually been planning, I've been designing a 6 or a, a Pokemon that would replace Articuno on this team and it would have been a Nido Queen so I could like absorb Toxic Spike and set up my own but for some reason I never got around to actually making it and yeah that Nido Queen would have helped me so much in this battle I mean Porygon 2 it's somewhat handy but I mean Nido Queen could have taken that Electivire out as well and hell, even Azumarill maybe could have taken it out with Aqua Jet or something. So I just T-Wave the Beedrill and it's... Yeah, this is going to be kind of a stall war now. I mean, I do crap damage to the Beedrill. The Beedrill does crap damage to me. See? And we both have Recover and or Roost, so... This is not going anywhere fast. Yeah, but then he switches out Beedrill and I'm like, hmm, okay, wonder what he brings in. Brings in the goddamn mill tank again, which takes spikes damage, and I just go for the T-Bolt again. Which actually does a fair amount, considering it's a mill tank, and I get Parahax, so that's always nice. But it has leftovers, so it's going to take ages for me to take it out. And obviously, all mill tanks carry milk drink, so that thing is not going to die ever. And he also has Heal Bell. I mean, wow. Heal Bell on mill tank and aromatherapy on Meganium. He must not like status moves on his Pokemon. He doesn't like having status effects. But looking at it in hindsight, I could have used a Heal Bell or an aromatherapy. Or a rapid spinner or something. Yeah. So he milk drinks and I'm not going anywhere fast at all. But then again, he's not going to be able to do anything in return. Well, or at least I thought because he also has Toxic. So crap, if there's one thing Porygon 2 does not like, it's status effects. Especially Poison. And yeah, now he's obviously just going to milk drink again. Because that's really all Mil Tank is going to be able to do now. So yeah, that kind of blows. Figure, get Porygon 2 out of there before he takes too much poison damage. Bring in Azumarill, because... You know, Azumarill, pretty damn physically powerful. Choice Bandit. I figure a Brick Break ought to run a number on that Mil Tank. And of course he pretty much fully heals up, which kind of blows. So then he goes for Milk Drink again, don't know why, because he was at full health already. Probably expecting Aqua Jet, but I go for Waterfall instead. And it crits, and it still does not knock him out. Probably because of this Azumarill's a legitimate Pokemon. One of my first EV trained Pokemon, which I didn't really breed for IVs yet. So that probably means it has crappy attack. But he milk drinks because he's faster. And waterfall again, and it's not a crit. And well, it still does about half, but that's not gonna cut it. I mean, at this rate, he can just keep stalling me. And then I might need a zoomer later because he also has an Infernape. So we switch it out, bring in Skarmory. Because I figure, yeah, I can just roost off the Seismic Toss. Toxic's not gonna work. So I can just start whirlwinding stuff now. Maybe get some spikes damage in there. And he goes for a Seismic Toss. I mean, he's at full health. No one, no one of his Pokemon have status moves. And, uh... Toxic's not gonna work, so... Yeah, you should go for Seismic Toss. So I Whirlwind. Hopefully pull in some Pokemon that's not gonna be able to do anything to my Skarmory. 
Like maybe bring in the B drill or something. But I bring in the one Pokemon I didn't want to bring in. Because Infernape pretty much forces me to switch or lose my Skarmory. And that sucks. So, get Skarmory out of there. Because I'm not really sure what he's going to do. Bring in a Zoomeril because I figured he'd use a fire move. And he does indeed go for overheat. Which a Zoomeril takes. Doesn't, not really takes it all that well actually. And he gets Life Orb Recoil, I get Poison Damage. Figured he saw the Aqua Jet coming, I expected a switch into Meganium. So I went with Ice Punch. But instead he brings in Mill Tank, and I was like... Really... Not knowing whether to pick Ice Punch or Brick Break, but I went for Ice Punch. Which he doesn't do crap, but I get a Freeze! So yes! That's... Real freaking awesome, except the Zoomerill's going to die to one more turn of poison. So that's not awesome, because Zoomerill's my best physical attacker, pretty much. So bring in Miss Magius. Because this is a prime opportunity. Switches out Miltank. I can probably tell what he's gonna do. He wants gonna want to bring in Meganium and use Aromatherapy. Meganium takes spikes damage, and I set up a nasty plot on the switch. So yeah, Miss Magius is ready to sweep now. Or at least somewhat. But I have to take this thing out, so I just go for Shadow Ball. And he dies, so he does not get to use Aromatherapy. Which probably saved my ass. Because if that Miltank was thought out, I would be so screwed. He brings in Infernape again. And I was thinking... Wait. Miss Magius is Tim at max speed. But still, this Infernape outspeeds him, so I'm guessing it's Scarfed. So that kind of blows. Because uh, Miss Magius could have dealt with pretty much everything on his team now. Because Inferno was the only one that outsped it. So yeah, figure. It's time to reveal the secret weapon now, which is my Entei. Which I did not have to use in any of my previous battles. So it's time for Entei to make his debut. And he immediately switches out into Flareon. I don't know, I wasn't going to use Flare Blitz on Infernape. So go for Extreme Speed, which almost one hit KOs the Flareon. So yeah, Entei is a freaking beast. And Flareon has leftovers. And he goes for Protect, apparently he wants to go Toxic Stall on my ass. And doesn't really matter to me because Extreme Speed is going to kill the Flareon next turn anyway. No matter how much leftovers recovery he gets. So Extreme Speed and Flareon dies. Oh well. Flareon, you're still the worst fire type ever. Or maybe that's Macargo, either one of them. And Entei's starting to get a little low on health. He brings in Beedrill. Now here I could have done things differently, maybe. I went for Flare Bits, but if I went for Stone Edge, I probably would have killed Beedrill as well. And I might have lived because the Flare Blitz recoil is what I think tipped Entei over the edge. Considering he gets Life Orb damage and Poison damage and that's going to kill him. So maybe if I went for Stone Edge there, I could have at least gotten one more move out of Entei. So yeah, that was a stupid move. So I bring in Blissey again. Because I'm not really sure what he's going to do now. He's going to bring in that blasted mill tank again, and I'm figured... Okay, I guess maybe a Seismic Toss or two will take him out, but he thaws out. And that is... Horrible, because... All I have left now is Blissey, Skarmory, and Azumarill. And Azumarill is going to die if it comes in be because of poison damage. And Azumarill is not even strong enough to take it out with anything. 
protection for maybe a critical brick break or something. And yeah, Blissey and Skarmory aren't strong enough to cause enough damage to kill him. Or at least, uh, not because you can heal it up with Milk Drink again. And Blissey's Toxic ain't gonna work because he's got Heal Bell. So yeah, from this point on it's just about 15 minutes of stalling. <sighs> this ought to be some damn boring narrations coming up. That's for sure. So yeah, he keeps going for seismic toss and whatnot. Man, I'm getting tired of seeing that animation already. Makes me hate planet Earth. And I roost. Which pretty much allows me to take two more seismic tosses. So I figure, okay, gotta keep on waiting until he like runs out of seismic toss before I can do anything. So that sucks. And there we go, Skarmory. Skarmory is going to be seeing space more often than American astronauts in this video. So I figure, okay, go for a whirlwind, get that thing the hell out of there. Because I need to kill Infernape as well. Because that's, uh, he only has Miltank and Infernape left. So Infernape comes out, takes Spike's damage, and I was hoping it was going to kill him, but it doesn't. Which means I need to bring in something that can survive one attack so it'll die to Life Orb. As it turns out, it's not Scarf, it's actually Life Orb, so... Yeah, I guess that Infernape's like... Naive or something, max speed, which is why it outsped Miss Magius. But he gets a crit on close combat. I'm fairly certain I would've lived that if it wasn't a crit, because in max HP, max defense, Porygon 2, bold. So yeah, he gets a crit, knocks out Porygon 2, which sucks. Even though Porygon 2 isn't really gonna save me anyway. But now his Infernape's also dead. Which means he's down to Miltank and I'm down to Blissey, Skarmory and Azumarill. So bring in Skarmory again. He brings in that accursed Miltank. Which simply will not die. Though maybe it would have helped if Skarmory had like taunt or anything. Maybe I would have won then. But then again, if Skarmory had taunt, like, which of its moves should go? I mean, it needs Brave Bird. It needs Roost. I'm pretty damn sure it needs Spikes. And Whirlwind's pretty damn important, too. So yeah, Skarmory suffers from what we know in the Pokemon community as Move Slot Syndrome. Where there's simply too many options to put in the four Move Slots. Ah, uh, this is getting so boring now. I mean, I swear, when I was playing this battle yesterday evening, I'm just like, dude, just end it already. I just went on and on like the raw files, like 50 minutes or something. Ah, uh, seismic toss again. Why the hell does that move have so damn many PP? I mean, it has like 30 or something. So yeah, I just figured, go for Brave Bird. See how many, maybe if I can get a crit on Brave Bird, I might be able to knock it out. But of course, Skarmory never ever gets crits when he needs them. Unlike uh, Pokemon Online, where for some reason I keep getting... Or my opponents keep getting crits on me for no particular reason, I mean... I think the critical hit ratio on that simulator is kinda jacked up. Anyways, he seismic tosses again, I brave bird again. And yeah, he's obviously going to milk drink now. So I'm not going to be able to take him out anyway, so why the hell not go for a healing move myself? There you go, he goes for Milk Drink. Which also has way too much PP. I go for Roost. I mean, yeah, it's just, it kind of keeps going on like this until the end of the video. 
So yeah, Seismic Toss again. And again. And again. Oh man, I hate Star Wars. I really, really do. So, Brave Bird again. Still hoping for a crit, but that's not gonna happen. I mean, the crit on Waterfall it was nice. As was the Freeze Hacks on Ice Punch. I mean, Azumarill is a crit, or is a hacks machine apparently. But why in the world did he have to de thaw? I mean, I almost makes me yonder for the good old days of red and blue or gold and silver, you know, where if you were frozen, you stayed frozen unless you used flame wheel or sacred fire or something. Or the opponent would use a fire move on you. And then they come in generation 3 and add in random thawing, which sucks. I mean, come on, what are the chances of inflicting a freeze? At least have it be useful if you m actually manage to inflict one. I mean, I can understand there's no, like, 75% accurate move that inflicts freeze on anything. But just at least have it be useful if you actually get the, like, 10% chance of freezing something. So yeah, I kinda figured out switching to Blissey, maybe try and get some Toxic on him. Get him to waste turns on heal belt so I can maybe sneak in some damage. But yeah, Skarmory and Blissey get to see an awful lot of space in this battle. So there we go, Toxic. Poison the mill tank. Which really shouldn't do much. Because he's probably just going to heal Ballot right away. You know, that's the annoying part of Mill Tank. He's a pretty damn good wall. But he's also moderately fast. Which means he's faster than Blissey, Skarmory and Azumarill. So we can always heal right up before I have a chance to knock him out. Which is really, really damn annoying. So yeah, Miltank flies again, crashes into the ground. Oh man. Boredom's really starting to set in fast now. Thumbs up if you agree this video is getting boring. So yeah, gotta get Blissey out of there because Blissey doesn't like the poison. And how many freaking PP does Seismic Toss have? Makes me wish I had a ghost move. Or a ghost type. That was still... Although wait, Miltank probably has... Uh, although wait, it's a walling Miltank. Probably has thick fat instead of that ability that lets you hit ghost moves with normal and fighting... Attacks. But yeah, that's also another one of the candidates I thought of to replace Articuno with was a Dusclops. And if that's a thick fat mill tank, Dusclops would have been pretty damn handy, I'd figure. Like, you know, maybe arresting Dusclops to get rid of the poison. With pressure, that could stall him out real fast. But yeah, I don't know what I was thinking putting Porygon 2 on there. Probably because it was expecting him to use the team he used in the previous battles, which... You know, I'd watched some videos of that. Like, wrote down all the moves and Pokemon and items and stuff. Because I pretty much got all of them from those videos, except for his Empoleon's moves, because the Empoleon got killed as soon as it came in. But, yeah... Uh, we're approaching the final stretches of the battle now. Only five more minutes of watching Pokemon get thrown into space. Which sounds much more exciting than it actually is. So yeah, I figure just start using spikes now. Just to stall them out. And then he goes for another seismic toss. I go into space yet again. And I roost. 
I mean, what do you expect me to do? Oh, man, oh man. I really could be narrating lots of more awesome stuff, like, you know, the Metroid Zero Mission Finale, or Yu-Gi-Oh, or God of War, or Pokemon XD. But no, we have to get this done as well. So yeah, go for a whirlwind again, you know, stalling. Oh man, this is so boring. But then he goes for seismic toss. Why do we keep seeing that? I mean, we know he's gonna go for seismic toss. So yeah, we fly and we crash. And here I messed up. I misclicked. I clicked on Whirlwind instead of Roost. And now Skarmory is weak enough to be taken out by a Seismic Toss. So I fucked myself over really damn good. And Skarmory is not going to get any opportunity to heal up anymore. So it's down to Blissey and Azumarill now, which both are poisoned and will die pretty damn soon. So yeah, that misclick really fucked me up. And Blissey and Azumarill are not going to be able to do anything whatsoever to this mill tank. I mean, yeah, I'm just, I think I'm just gonna let Blissey, like, Oh no, I uh, soft-boiled. Not that it's going to do me much good. Because of the toxic damage, it will just keep on increasing. I mean, if I only let the Beedrill set up one layer of toxic spikes, I would have easily been able to stall him out because I could just use... Uh, because my leftovers would just heal that right up, but because of the toxic... Or because there's two layers of toxic spikes, the damage keeps increasing each turn. Which means Blissey is not going to be able to last much longer. And he's just going to heal Bell right away when I use toxic on him. So, yeah. This really sucks, man. Like, I really messed up good. So, yes, what shall we talk about? Let's just talk about the weather, because there's not much going on. Let me open the curtains. Ah, it's a nice, sunshiny day here in the Netherlands today. Okay, that's boring as fuck. And the battle just keeps on going and going and going and whatnot and he immediately heal bells up when I poison him oh well at least the end's getting in sight so yeah Blissey heals up again Miltank heals up again and they're both at full health until poison takes away a quarter of my health and at this point I figured he started using toxic over and over again I was like Okay, either he's out of Seismic Toss PP, or he's he wants to make me think that he's out of Seismic Toss PP. And I did not really know which one of those it was, but it wasn't going to matter much, because Blissey's dead now. Azumarill only has one shot at taking him out, and Skarmory is going to die if he still has one PP of Seismic Toss remaining. Oh uh, man. Talking for half an hour straight is really bad for my voice. Anyways, Blissey will die from poison damage now. Which makes me very sad face. So I figure, okay, bring in Azumarill. I got one shot at this. Of course, he's still faster, so he heals right up. Okay, gotta take out a full health mill tank with the choice bandit brick break. And it doesn't even do half. Now, I was also debating teaching Azumarill Superpower or Focus Punch. 
And Focus Punch would have easily one hit KO'd him right there. Super Power, maybe. But yeah, all I have is Skarmory, which will die. Because he's, he tricked me, he still has Seismic Toss left. So he takes out Skarmory. And I lose due to a fucking misclick. Yeah. Well, uh... Sucks. Good game, uh, King and Nito 17. Yeah, better luck next time, I guess. Well, back to narrating LPs now, I figure. So, see you guys later sometime.